Welcome to episode 7, I think this is. Since the last episode, I really didn't have the chance to do much. Yeah, between the episodes, most of today basically, I did this zip chain, which to, took about 5 hours. I really hate the zip chain system, as I said before. Yeah, I know I that they are designed, I mean, obviously it's a cost-saving measure, but yeah, they're annoying, they're ugly, so yeah, I don't like them, as I said before. And yeah, I think I will pretty much immediately get rid of at least some of them. I think I'm gonna keep this one for the motors and the limit switches that I still need to mount. But I am planning on getting rid of these, and as you can see, I started dismantling it because uh, I mean, look at this mess, it's ugly and it really feels weak as well. It's not gonna last, I don't think so. Yeah, and there is an alternative, I'll just have the PTFE tube and all these wires running up there, up to the top of the 3D printer, basically, uh, umbilical cord design. And I'll probably sleeve that bunch as well, including the PTFE tube. I actually started mounting a 24-pin motherboard connector for this. This is the other thing that I did today. I've been at this for another couple of hours and I think I've come up with a solution that will satisfy me aesthetically. And the solution is basically having an umbilical cord just as I described coming from here and uh, joining with the PTFE tube and I'll probably sleeve them together running up to the center of the back top extrusion I'll mount the Mobius around here as well for now and I, when I switch to afterburner I'll have a spool holder system there instead so I'll still use the PTFE tube that's not gonna change then to route the cable, well, I could just uh, run them at the back like that and just use a back cover or run it well, like so to the extrusion and behind it. Or I do have a spare drag chain from the old Black Widow. I mean, it's a drag chain normally, but yeah, I could just use it as a cable channel because yeah well it fits aesthetically because as you can see for the uh, gantry i decided to use uh, one of the old black widow uh, drag chains so black widow is uh, living on actually <laughs> i you know i started planning on using some of the parts and never actually ended up using them well here was something at least that i'm using from the old black widow and that along with this uh, DL touch mounting bracket. So yeah, this is for the wires onto gantry for the AMB motors. And as I described, everything else I will run to here. I mounted the extruder along with a triangle lab filament sensor. I haven't done the wiring for these yet, as you can see. I also did the umbilical cord and yeah it runs here i haven't sleeved this yet and honestly i don't know how i can sleeve it because on this end i already connected the cable on this end i also did the routing it was poor planning on my part but i don't want to disassemble this so maybe i'll get some of those uh, clothes uh, tapes and just wrap around i don't know or if i'm if i feel like working on it i can just remove the pins from the connector i guess the ptfe tube itself is easy to remove anyway it's just the pins that are a pain in the ass but yeah as you can see i did that and as i said before i used one of these drag chains as a cable routing channel basically and here uh, I don't know, maybe if I turn the light, you should, you may be able to see it better. Here I am using another one of the Black Widow brackets. It's one of the belt routing brackets this time. 
and this will allow me to just grab the sponge and roll it to the back so yeah I also did the uh, routing for this uh, gantry uh, belt, uh, cable chain as well and yeah in the end it has two 8 pin connectors and yeah I guess that's all I did uh, one more thing in between the fuses arrived two episodes ago if you remember the power socket doesn't have any fuses I guess you probably don't remember it, but two episodes means a month ago but anyway yeah that's all I did I mounted the X and Y switches and also the Z switch here and I wasn't aware that they were on the on this part of the gantry the part that moves back and forth so yeah I couldn't completely eliminate the wires but I think this still looks better than the zip chain thing and yeah I think I'll just as you can see I routed it here so I think I'll just run it through the umbilical cord back to the uh, back of the printer to the outside to the electronics chamber I routed the wires for the Z switch through the heat pad hole just like the heat pad wires and yeah as you can see I mounted the heat pads and yeah because the that's in the way I used all four screws I know the manual suggests you to use only three and I may switch back to that I just I don't know I felt like I should start by four three feels just weird I know it's theoretically better for leveling but yeah anyway that's how I did it it can change it's not a big deal anyway and yeah that's all I did so I'll get back to it I crimped every connector in this mess so everything in the hot hand is now connected hopefully I didn't fuck up any of the crimps and this will work we'll see when we get to testing it I'll now do the crimps for the connectors up here and here as well I did the rest of the connectors as well and well I think there's nothing left on the 3D printer to do other than the wiring underneath and uh, covering this with Tessa tape that should arrive in a couple of days so yeah this is not a big problem and this ugly mess won't be this bad at least hopefully it will even look decent we'll see I sleeve the umbilical cord with uh, some cloth Tessa tape and I also did most of the cable sleeving and routing here I know it's not the world's best job of cable organizing but yeah I did my best and honestly I think it looks a bit worse than it actually is on camera and well part of the problem is that well, I also haven't connected some of these cables so it will look even tidier than it is and I'll put another zip tie here just to organize that bunch and yeah like these rainbow colors they'll just plug in here and they'll be in well they'll not be invisible but they'll not look like the way they do at least and there isn't too much I can do for some cables for example this is a USB cable these 90 degree ones that I used that run to the Raspberry Pi I had to bundle them up here you can't really shorten those so yeah not much I can do to some cables but most of it I cut to the proper lengths and sleeved as you can see yeah I'm repeating myself but yeah Another thing I did is I flashed the Octopi, Octopi firmware on this Raspberry Pi 4 and I also installed Clipper on this and I modified the firmware on these micro SD cards as well and I'm at the step where I have to uh, boot these SKR boards as well to finish the setup and I'm not there yet because well I don't have the connectors for these and for that I am waiting for my engineer PA09s 
I expect them to be here on Monday or something like that, so it shouldn't take that long, but yeah, for now, there really isn't anything else I can do, so it's again the waiting game, just like it is with the rest of the build for AliExpress parts. Only difference is this case it's Amazon. The engineer PA09s have finally arrived. It took seven days for them to come to from America to my country, and then it took seven days to just them to deliver in this one city yeah i really hate the shipping company the amazon works with here it's called aramex never even heard of them before amazon started working with them a few years ago but yeah they, they, they suck hopefully they will switch to a better company but yeah as i said the pao09s are now here uh, it looks a little different than the Amazon product images and I think that's due to the fact that they moved their production to Taiwan. I don't necessarily have a problem with that. The, uh, the normal pictures show them have a text written on somewhere on the uh, crimpers itself that say made in Japan. That's how I know. I don't have any problem with them manufacturing in Taiwan, but yeah, hopefully they manage to keep the quality consistent. As long as that's the case, I don't really mind it. Hopefully this isn't another case where manufacturer manufacturing moves to a different country and quality is gone. But yeah, there's one way to see that obviously, and it is to use this. So without any further delay, let's get to finishing the wiring of this thing and then probably starting the testing of this as well all the wiring is now done and uh, it's also cable managed well, it's at least as good as it's gonna get i'm not great at cable management but yeah as you can see it is still relatively tidy if i had cable channels to cover these it would look better but yeah still it's pretty decent at least compared to back of my computer and yeah as you can see I crimped and socketed everything that I had to remind me to never ever solder again I had to remove the DuPont style connectors on this side and as you can see I fucked up and lifted all the pads on both sides actually <laughs> and yeah <laughs> that happened then I tried replacing it with a JSCXH connector, it didn't really fit because, well, there are no pads. So I decided to use some wires and connect the plus 5 volts and minus basically ground properly, the top and bottom one. But the signal wire, while well, I was trying to solder it, since when I lifted the pad I also lifted a trace. I had to solder to next to R6, hopefully you can see it on camera, well, yeah, I fucked it up as well, and now that R6 is gone, and I replaced it with an inline resistor here, it was just a 100 ohm resistor, so that's still theoretically gonna work, but also, somehow, I managed to get rid of uh, C5 here and yeah that was a cap obviously hopefully it was just uh, cleaning the electrical signals wasn't doing much and hopefully these things will still work but yeah don't trust with don't trust my soldering I suck at it and that's why I avoid doing soldering as much as I can in case you were wondering in the past and it's not like I don't have proper tools, I just, I'm bad at it, so, yeah, that's the situation. I'll see if this works, hopefully it doesn't release the magic smoke out of anything, we'll see. Uh, probably it won't work, and probably it won't cause the magic smoke, but yeah, we'll see. I fixed the damaged SMD components by just mounting this on a spare PCB and yeah using some true hole stuff basically I lost a 100 ohm uh, resistor and 10 and 100 nanofarad caps 
and yeah as you can see I did the soldering yeah. it's okay I think it will get the job done the clearance isn't perfect but yeah, it's just 5 volts I am now testing the board and well there is no magic smoke that is good news but uh, it wasn't the problem wasn't the jumper cables as I suspected before because well I'm assuming this board is still working because I'm getting the exact same error as before and that is uh, ADC out of range and it shuts down I just tried doing a restart as well and yeah as you can see the same result I am uh, looking at well, at least before I looked at the log files, it looks like a temperature related issue. So, yeah, honestly, I don't know what I can do now. I'll try to figure it out, but yeah, this is starting to get a bit confusing, so I'm not really sure what I can do. Right now, I'm trying a known good PT100 thermistor. This is the old one that I used in the Black Widow, it was from E3D and it was working just fine. I connected it here and ran through the board and surprise surprise I'm still getting the same result, it's still shut down. Okay there is some progress, I somehow thought of connecting the, the temperature sensor on a different lot than the recommended one in the guide and somehow doing this made the firmware work but there still is a problem it's probably because of all the <laughs> messing around I did with the board as you can see even though the tool head isn't heated it's reading 163 degrees Celsius and this is with the known good uh, PT100 I tried connecting the the other one as well and it's reading roughly the same temperature as well. I should clarify what was going on one more time just in case it was confusing. The board that wrangled up sand was actually good. It was probably spitting out the correct signal but the pin on the SKR board while it was configured properly it still wasn't reading it correctly. I don't know why exactly, the pin is somehow bad and while I was trying to figure it out I blamed the uh, DuPont jumper cables and I tried some soldering stuff, fucked up the board and then Frankenstein it back together and now that I figured out the pin was the actual blame I can get uh, some reading from the PT100 thermistor but since I Frankenstein that board I think that's the blame at least, I'm not getting a proper reading, I'm getting like hundreds of degrees celsius at room temperature and it fluctuates quite a bit as well, so it's definitely not reading properly. I also tried ordering a MAX81-3165 or something like that, whatever the Duet daughter daughterboard uses, but yeah. I have one of those sensors but that's not gonna work because there's no way to connect an SPI sensor to the SKR board as far as I know and it's SPI based. And yeah that's where we stand at this point so I don't really have any other option to other than ordering uh, another adapter board. This time I'm not going for, to order it from Triangle Lab, not because it was bad but because of the coronavirus. It's gonna take forever to arrive from China, so I'm gonna order f from E3D. They have the same thing, Triangle Lab is the clone of it anyway, because the schematic is out there. So yeah, I'm gonna order that, we'll see. It will take some time to arrive, so that's gonna be it for this episode, unfortunately. I do have two little clips that I cut earlier that show some other stuff that I noticed but yeah I'll show them to you right now but other than that that's it for this video I just noticed something 
as you know I haven't even used the printer yet and yeah, as you can see there are cracks on the parts so yeah, reprinting another set of the 2.2 parts definitely should be one of the first things that I do because I don't feel like this will last that much based on this crack and well this is the one that's the easiest to film there are smaller ones around here for example as well so yeah I ordered some filaments because uh, my old PLA filaments while I'll, while I'll still have those they may be bad because of all the humidity over the years and I'm just recording this to show you that I noticed something I don't know if this is common knowledge but I didn't know it or something since I didn't follow the 3D printing community for a while but I ordered some ESON PLA as I did back in the day I also ordered this tiny lab uh, PLA filament as well and well based on the box and the way the stickers are laid out and even the markings on the front side of the box they seem pretty much identical inside while the spool itself is different you notice that even the tape they use hopefully you can make it out in the dark it's basically the same tape so yeah I'm pretty confident that these two type filament came out of the same factory so yeah as I said I don't know if this is common knowledge but if it is not well, there you go you now know about it I ordered two boxes of black uh, PLA filament the eSun and this tiny lab and I ordered raised 3D's black ABS filament so that I can print some of the missing parts and if I do need the accent color I'll, I'll have to order that from Amazon because it's the Amazon Basics ABS but yeah that'll have to wait in that case it's hard to open so whatever there's a black P uh, ABS in this as I said so that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it even though we couldn't do as much progress as I hoped to do. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, please leave me a like down below and thanks for watching.